Um, but I'd like very much like to see a few reviews because otherwise uh, my job as a document checker will be a very tough one because I couldn't well state that there is kind of there has been any working group review. So um, do we have anyone around who has read the document and would be willing to um, phrase their notes in a way that it could become a review? Well, I heard from Hank, who has a standing conflict at, at this uh, uh, slot in, in the week, that uh, he has uh, uh, looked at the document. He hasn't written up his review yet, but is optimistic that he can do this within a week. That would be excellent. Um, and as I seem to have pronounced it a bit badly, uh, it's about CDDL control. So the document with the new operators like bet and cat. Uh, I can review it. Uh, I have very little knowledge or opinion about it, but uh, I can read it and see if I understand it. That would, I'd appreciate that a lot. Thank you. Yeah, it's really putting together three things. Uh, one is the ABNF uh, thing, which is uh, kind of a no-brainer in principle, but <laughs> has a few details that uh, uh, we had to get right uh, before this actually could be used. Uh, one is the, the infrastructure for that, which has this .cat and .dat and, and also the .plus, which, which is just uh, speculative right now, but uh, we know that, that some uh, models are out there that uh, could have used that. And the third one is the, the feature um, uh, extension, the feature control, uh, which turns out to be extremely useful in the SDF work. So I think we really have uncovered a good way to handle uh, specification or model evolution uh, here. And uh, this is certainly going to move forward and, and uh, uh, become a more uh, more capable thing over time. But right now, the, the very, very simple thing that the, the feature control uh, offers uh, already solves 80% uh, of the problem uh, that we were having. So I'm, I'm really happy with that in the SDF uh, context. Is there any particular tooling out there that's using that already that I could um, work into the list of implementations that are out there? Well, everything is uh, implemented in the um, classical CDDL tool. And uh, I know that, that Andrew Weiss has a partial implementation, but I think he recently hadn't, hasn't had that much time to complete things. And actually adding ABNF is, is a lot of work if you don't have yeah. the, the ABF infrastructure uh, in your platform already. And it's not like people have been lining up for implementing ABNF in, yeah. in various platforms. Okay, but that's still, that's still a good starting point to, to I mean, that, that, mean, that means that it ha even though it's just a single tool that's implementing it in, in full, that still means that it's being used in a wider context and not just, in, just not, not just only where this particular tool is used. Okay. Um, any comments on, on that document that we could address now? Then let's jump on to SQL Pact, of which I was very happy to play, start playing around with the implement, with uh, Carsten's implementation. Um, so it looks like it works nicely. Um, Carsten, do you want to say a few words about that? Yeah, so um, I have I wrote this implementation about four years ago um, when we were discussing uh, ways to to efficiently represent uh, variable things, uh, thing descriptions, and uh, since they are using JSON LD, uh, the the those thing descriptions tend to be quite uh, chatty. Now, normally a thing description may not need to be actually on the 
constraint device, so the the pressure to to get this uh, uh, compact isn't that strong. So after in, uh, some initial discussion, we we didn't really work on that for a while. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I uh, dug this out again now, and um, the the decompressor is complete. I think mm -hmm. <laughs> so. That certainly needs to be validated. Um, the uh, compressor um, is rather simple-minded, so uh, right now it, it does a perfect job on uh, sharing items, uh, but it's rather simple-minded on <clears throat> prefix and, and suffix uh, compression because. Uh, yeah, I'm, I haven't done the, the formal in, in, uh, analysis, but I would expect that uh, there's significant uh, theoretical complexity uh, to that. So we will uh, rarely see an implementation that does a really great job uh, for that if it's a generic implementation. But an implementation that actually implements a specific application data model uh, may be able to to exploit the functionality um, of of the packed uh, format, and uh, maybe at some point uh, I will add something to the implementation that makes it easier for an application to control how how CBOR pack actually uh, works. But th that's not there yet. So right now you get a generic compression. Uh, and uh, th that uh, is right now limited to just uh, prefix sharing of strings. So we are not doing suffix sharing. We are not looking at arrays and uh, maps. Yet maps are particularly interesting because uh, it, it's a n-dimensional problem to to find a good set of, of prefixes for a map because they aren't ordered. So prefixes actually aren't prefixes. Um, so that that will require some. Um, innovation to do it in a generic uh, way, but it still can be uh, used uh, very efficiently for specific applications. And any any user any any user voices or applications that that uh, I mean it's the the particular application uh, implementation has been out just for what was it half a day or so yes um, so I I I think that this will need a bit of playing around by all involved and I'd invite everyone to do it so especially with their own kind of so what, now that we have this it's really easy to take your own examples and write up code in your own application, the compression parts that you think make sense, and then just throw it at the decompressor and see whether it still looks looks as you would expect it to look. So this is, I think, some a point where everyone could start just playing around with things. This is Russ. I think Suit would have used this had, uh, had it been done sooner, but I doubt we'll go back and open it up. Uh, since we're at working group last call with the spec that would have used it. Um, do you have uh, access to some kind of small corpus of suit documents that you could just um, throw into the existing compressor and kind of see how well it fares, even though there is something else going in there? Or is there a way for, um, to, um, to kind of undo the optimizations that suit does and throw that at the at the existing simple compressor. I don't think so because we didn't have this tool, so we didn't use it. <laughs> so we kind of built our own uh, thing in the structure. Yeah, as soon as you do something at the application level. Uh, it becomes hard for for the for a generic packer exactly uh, to to unravel that and and provide its stuff. I was thinking a bit along the lines of if there is anything left in suit where you basically can 
opt out of of what you did in in what you did to make the compression happen um then then this then this could be applied again um no i don't know if you that to doesn't understand see, whether that's whether that fits at all no that doesn't fit what we have at this point All right. Um, by the uh, that would also be a, that would also be a good um, point in time to to have another look at the, doc, at the document. Um, and I definitely plan on on having one more look myself. So yeah. Um, any more comments on this for for here and for now? So for, for the way forward, um, I think the, the important observation is that the, um, the actual packed format is the, the interesting part and the part that probably can stay uh, stable for a long time, while the specific uh, part that does the table setup, in particular the tag 51 uh, that, that is currently proposed in, in the uh, document, that might have more frequent uh, variations. Um, so if if you have something in mind where where uh, pack would be useful, but don't find uh, tag fifty one particularly well fitting, uh, then maybe it's worth discussing uh, how to uh, do the table setup properly. There is the the question of the of the scope of the tables. Um, is that um, pinned down in the current document already, or is there some? Because this will come back again when we talk later about the records proposal. Um, is it? Um, can can the table be altered um, to, inside the document, or is that always something that independent of whether it's done through tag fifty one or any other tag um, done from the outside? Well, the <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so um, the um, table set and mechanisms that are described in the document are hierarchical. So uh, anything that that uh, messes around with tables uh, influences what's inside uh, that definition, and that's different for for instance from the way the the record. Uh, proposal uh, works uh, where you have uh, components um, in in the uh, data item that uh, influence all components that that are topologically after that component and that that topological aspect is a little bit complicated because okay. maps are not ordered in CBO, okay. so you you cannot influence uh, one part of a map from another part of the map, uh, but you can influence anything that follows uh, uh, that uh, map. So the, this uh, linear approach, uh, which also is, is in the existing tag, uh, what was it, 25? Um, but, but that's even worse because it doesn't define the partial ordering. Uh, that linear approach is in contrast to the hierarchical approach. And I think in the in the long run, uh, we will find applications for both. But I think the hierarchical approach is uh, going to be the normal one, and the, the other one is going to be a bit more specialized. Yeah, that 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 seems to be a good point to to continue the discussion to the to the record proposal, which is on which is using that uh, that that linear approach. Um, Carsten, do you want to say a few words, or shall I just um, 
introduce the topic in, uh, in first place. Please go ahead. Um, so this is um, uh, the point. This is coming from is a is a request for is, as far as as standard. This is a request for tag allocation um, for usage that is uh, by and large looking like uh, looking like like CSV or looking like um, like it, used for for all kind of data that are that have repeated rows in a in an existing grouping. So the, the current proposal by and I don't know whether I pronounce the 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 name right. Is it Chris Sub probably? Um, is to set up an initial set of of keys like um, basically like like column names, and then in the same uh, in the same tagged item. Um, sorry, no, in, in in following items in the same array to reference. Using a using a number of defined tags, um, those keys, and then just have the values. So, if you're thinking of a of a say a SNML document, then you will that is, that has the same structure over all records, or as it, it can be used here, even over a large proportion of its records, it could say that the regular record in um kind of the, the first kind of record consists of a name and a value and a T. And then go on just having an array tagged with this tag two six eight a zero, um, and items just the name, just the value, just the t, and 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 continue through with that. Um, Carsten has followed up uh, on this with a with a basically a, a an exploration of the of the space that goes a bit wider from allowing from from just just doing what CSV does. Um, down to um, down to packing it in the in the most compact way possible. Um, Carsten, how how intensely has you have you been uh, in contact with Chris on this so far, or was the well we, we had a, since since uh, the end of last year we, we had an on and off uh, discussion, and it took me a while to pick up what he was really trying to do because. Um, I have specific things I have been working on that, that kind of shape my my perception of this. Um, so you know there is RFC eighty seven forty two, which is uh, for homogeneous arrays. So I was immediately thinking, uh, thinking about uh, uh, homogeneous collections of of rows, and for that, of course, uh, the the proposal. Is is rather suboptimal because every single row has what structure it has, as opposed to saying it once for for the array. So that was one piece of misunderstanding, and uh, of course the the other piece of misunderstanding was since I was uh, working on on CWAP Pack at the while um, at the time, I I thought this was about compression only about uh, a more compact representation. But it seems what what Chris really has in mind here is also a semantic component. So you could have some some additional semantics uh, for each of of those uh, tags. He doesn't show how to define that semantics. Maybe that that semantics actually uh, can be completely derived from the record definition uh, that that is in in the tag one hundred five. Um, but I think that, that that's fundamentally different from the the simple packing uh, aspect, mm -hmm. and I think that that's also something that um, in the long run will will um, shape some of the tag definition discussions uh, because there there are a number of common uh, data structures that people are. Uh, using and records are among those um, that, of course, can be represented in CBOR in some way, but uh, you, you don't say that uh, what you just represented actually is a record. So getting the, this uh, semantic uplift uh, in, into the tags is always one thing that comes with the enhanced representation um, aspect. So in the, the long run, what, what I, I would like to achieve is that we have a little library of, of uh, 
a standard information le uh, model level uh, types uh, with tags that tell you how to represent this at the, the CBOR data model uh, level. So people who come around and say, oh, I have these records, uh, they, they know they, they can uh, use this existing structure. They don't have to invent anything. And people who implement uh, more comprehensive CBOR implementations can put in direct support for the, the most important uh, types of those. So, so applications don't have to do that again. So when you, when you look at uh, language specific uh, formats like like the BERT uh, stuff that that comes with Erlang or um, the the Haskell Serdi stuff and so on, they they all have done this kind of work, but focused on their language, of course. And um, yeah, depending on on the the network affinity of the language. Um, that may be a good thing to directly support from from CBO. Yeah. So the the curating of those of that tag collection, which uh, as as you said, is has already become uh, pretty large because people have been using CBO for all kinds of applications. The curating of that tag collection in the end. Uh, will uh, define how useful uh, CBO is uh, for for writing protocols in specific application domains. I'm still trying to understand a bit what you said about the the records being being defined by the application and having their semantics. Um, does this relate to how we recently talked about the um, the, the enums where you have something that is defined by the application, but it doesn't really tell CBO what it is. Would would that be some a style of these of these record types, or is this, or are they more really? I mean, or or is the expectation that people will really define their own record types as dedicated tags here? In which case, the question is, do they why or why do they need those introductory um, kind of column name uh, descriptions in the first place? Well, the, the column names are uh, useful if you are sending this to an implementation that doesn't have uh, the the record definition predefined. So you, you still can represent this as a classical JSON uh, structure or as a CSV or, or things like uh, that. So the, the sending that definition with the data is is useful to be uh, more schemaless in in effect, uh, mm -hmm. but at the same time, uh, adding some some application semantics may make it easier for for specific applications that that have specific support for uh, records uh, to make use of that. But that support will then not survive a round trip through something that just uses the the header dictionary. Correct. That that sounds to me a bit like like there is a lot of of kind of soul searching to go on in 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 what what is really the application this is this is trying to this is trying to target and. Maybe also to see whether this can really be supported by a by a single solution, because if it's it seems to me like, well, there's, like... There, there's a lot of stuff that of course a lot of stuff that you could add to any Seabor stream that maybe would not survive every round tripping. Um, some of it would be gratuitous. I guess the question is whether or not the data survives the round tripping um and not the metadata mm -hmm. and i think that's that's those are that's an important distinction but um you know not the only it's not the only consideration i don't know if you guys heard the the covid uk covid data which was round tripped in and out of csv and xls and whatever and resulted in losses <laughs> precision right um 
And it was absolutely completely incredible what they were doing, why it was like, you know, but, but it is a good example of what happens if you don't survive round tripping with the metadata. Um, but I, I just think that in that case, they lost precision, uh, but in other, and they exceeded, uh, let me see, they, that's the case. They exceeded the number of columns is yes. a problem, right? Um, so that's not a problem that we would have had if from that, we would have lost metadata about something, but we wouldn't have, you know, lost data. So, so it could be reconstructed by some application that knows what's, what's going on. Yeah, that's the point I think is that there and, 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 uh, so, okay. So you round tripped it and then you lost this metadata. Um, so a, you could go back, you could say, oh, that's a problem, but that just means I shouldn't go in and out of this program. I need to just go in and the other program needs to take it, you know, some other thing, or I need to improve the program. Um, but the med, but the metadata, so it would be unfortunate if the metadata disappeared and you never got, you never saved it, right? You overwrote the file. Um, but on the other hand, it wouldn't be catastrophic is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's important to keep in mind that th this is not not always just a bilateral relationship. So you have one sender and one receiver, uh, but but data may actually go to different places, and these places want to do different things with that, and and some of them actually uh, benefit from the metadata, and the other places don't need that because they want to do some spe specific processing. Um, that that doesn't have to look into that part of the metadata. So a thing that that occurs to me that would benefit from the metadata um, and wouldn't be application specific is something like a graphing or a statistical program, which is just going to use the metadata probably to label the axes and stuff like this, but otherwise has no specific knowledge about what's in it, right? Yep. Although if a distinction is made between different kinds of records that just happen to have the same name, then that might end up either in unfortunate um, coincidence, uh, coincidence of access or very practical coincidence of access, depending on how it's used. Above our pay grade. <laughs> Okay, so I think that, that that's one aspect of this, and the other aspect, of course, is the the linear um, aspect. Um, so, in in um, the uh, proposal that, that I immediately came up with, that that the, the CSV like uh, proposal, um, there you would have a root uh, provide. Uh, the the structure and uh, the um, yeah thank you um, and the the um, data that is inside that structure uh, uh, inside the data item uh, gets the structure but not necessarily other places of course doing it in a linear way means that you can encode things. And when you come along to something that, that needs this, uh, you just uh, uh, put in the definition and then you can, can use it. So you, you can do this in a more uh, dynamic way. You don't have to ascertain that the, the whole thing uses the same structure. That you don't have to ascertain that this is homogeneous. On the other hand, for, for someone decoding it, it may actually be valuable to know upfront uh, that that the whole thing is homogeneous. So there, there are two different kinds of applications, and uh, I'm I'm not sure we we have uh, we always have a strong preference uh, here. Uh, but if we want to support the linear way, then then we need to do one thing, uh, which is defining that partial ordering. 
so people know which uh, structures that, that follow the definitional instance, uh, the definitional item, uh, can actually make use of that data safely. And that partial ordering would not be a problem here because we're talking about an array and not a map, right? Right, but that array might be in a map. And um, so um, in, you can build more complex constructs where, where it suddenly does become important to think about the partial order. But might it not suffice to only define that order within within the top level structure and there say, okay, yeah, we can have, I mean, the, the proposal I've read from Chris so far sounds like it's more local code. So you can define some things inside the area and that's valid later on, but it won't be valid outside that area. Well, I'm not sure I, I read it that way. Um, I, I only read it briefly before the meeting yeah. and it was a bit in a hurry, so I could easily be wrong here. I think it's just using the term previously defined. Yeah, but previously defined record to me reads a bit like it, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a record inside something that contains records, but yeah, that that will need precision either way. Yeah. Yeah, so th there is this uh, section in, in 8949 where we say it's uh, not a good idea to uh, rely on the actual encoding sequence for that, like tag 25. Uh, does and so this is not recommended uh, but the text in 8949 doesn't tell you what actually is recommended if you are uh, going for the linear okay so writing that up at, at some point is probably a good idea if you want to support the linear approach at all and i'm wondering what what kind of document this would go into that, that would have been my very next question So one is, of course, the, the notable tag documents, but th that's a grab bag. And there, there's so much stuff in there that it, it won't be uh, published uh, after another couple of years or so. Um, so maybe that's not the best place to, to do something that other specifications want to essentially normatively uh, reference, even if those specifications are just uh, uh, specifications that are attached to a tag registration. Yeah, and I'm I'm not sure they would look there because if as long as this document is largely a, for for this use use the, that and for that use use that, that's not intuitively something that where you would look for guidance for doing yet another thing. Would this be, is this something that would be in scope for Elwig or is this, is this more, or do we have to do the, or is the, or does this better fit here? I'm not fully sure what the scope for Elwig is, but it kind of sounds like implementation guidance is something that could fit there. Well, first of all, I'm not sure that, that Elwig is going to be around uh, for, for a lot more time. Okay. Uh, but uh, more importantly, they're, they're really talking about implementations and uh, not uh, specifications. Uh, so I think this would be a little bit out of scope for them. Okay. And of course, we, we always have to carefully read our uh, charters uh, so we don't run into an ITF chair that tells us the, the work that has been going on for a year was, was not in the charter in the first place. Yes, but for that, we'd have to find where we want to do it and then evaluate whether we can do yeah. it there. Yeah. Yeah, so what my personal view was that, that uh, the, the CBA working group does essentially two things. Uh, and one is curating the tag space and, and making sure that, that uh, the batteries that are included with 
uh, SIBO actually takes you to all the places where you need them to take you. And the other uh, thing is uh, the CDDL uh, language and, and uh, making sure that this uh, covers all the bases that we can get a um, CDDL 2.0 going, but also that we curate the control operator uh, space that is defined in there. And that's maybe an, an interesting observation that we have done two protocols, uh, CBOR and, and CDDL, that actually are so extensible uh, that it, it's uh, useful or, or even important to actually curate that that uh, those uh, the space that those extension points provide. Publishing publishing guidance for how how to extend the space probably stands a good chance of falling into the curating. Uh, um point of the of the agenda uh, of the of the charter right um, on the on the on the general on the kind of more general topic of of those records um any of those around, uh, any of you around have, an, have documents where they might have used this or data formats where they might have used this um, if it were around? Well, Senemel, <laughs> if, if uh, we had had something like this for Senemel, uh, Senemel packs are sequences of records which are not homogeneous, uh, but uh, th there are only going to be a small number, li like a dozen or so uh, different records in, in many uh, different kinds of records in many sentimental packs. Uh, so essentially saying ahead, um, these are the kinds of records we have, or saying within the, the sequence of records, oh, here's a new one. Um, and we're going to use this henceforth. Uh, that that might actually fit cinema, uh, might have fit cinema very well. So from from the cinema files, I've seen many of them would even fit the single the single single record type category. Yeah, or they might have one base record and then all the other ones. <laughs> yeah. Um, and probably many of them might also have a case which really didn't come up here um, yet in, in this discussion where they have some of the shared elements and, and one more. So there could be, in if we're looking at the potential representations again, when going with the explicit form, um, there could be a really use for using just one item or three items in a single record and then just kind of using names as they come along. So a record might have a name and a, a name and a time and a timestamp and a, and a say base time, oh sorry, a name and a value or the later uh, a value and a name and a later record might only have a value and not a name. Yeah, so I think that that's a good idea, uh, throwing Senra against this proposal and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Do you know where where Senml is is used in in a kind of enlarged enough deployments that they have good examples of a wide variety of of cases to cases to run against this? Well, I think one person who might have a good selection of Senml files to throw at this is Ari, Ari Karanen. So maybe we should ask him. Yep. Can you do that? Yes. Thank you.
Um, I think we are on a good point with this. And given that Michael has asked a few minutes to talk about network ex address extension, um, unless someone wants to speak up now for for another point on that on the records topic, I'd say we switch over there. Michael. Um, Michael, if you're talking, we don't hear you yet. I hope he's not only coming back literally four minutes before we before the end of the session. Hi, sorry, you were I received a phone call as you were pinging me. Um, hi, so um, there was some discussion um, about whether we would like to have a way to indicate an IP, in a full IPv6 address, meaning all 120 bits, plus a prefix um, that you would use to describe that uh, network that it's on. And so that's more akin to what you feed into ifconfig, for instance, as opposed to how you describe the network. Um, and I don't know whether that's a useful extension or what the opinion of others are. Um, I know Karsten has made a suggestion as to uh, a syntax. Um, and Ole Tron thought that that's what that was, inclu was included. And I guess I feel I'm looking for guidance as to what the working group feels. Yeah, so the, the sequence of events was that that uh, Ole Trojan looked at this and said, how about this? And uh, yeah, I, I kind of uh, agreed that uh, having these interface configurations where you have an address uh, plus the number of bits uh, to take out of the address to uh, derive the, the prefix of the network, um, I agree that this is a very common application. So when, when we address addresses and prefixes, we might as well address the, the interface configuration uh, kind of combination. Yeah, I think that's a good word for it, interface configuration. Um, the thing is that um, there's some other stuff that, that usually you wind up with the interface configuration. Um, that would include the default route. Um, maybe name servers. Um, and so what I'm trying to say, kind of hint here is that maybe the person who has that problem that they want to store interface configurations or communicate them has some other data they want to communicate as well. And so maybe it's really a higher level concept than what we're describing here um, is my first thought. The other thought I have is, well, if we didn't insist that the trailing bits that are beyond the prefix were zero, then we could just treat it all as a prefix. Yeah, but we would lose the distinction, which I think is... is uh, we would lose the distinction in, in this thing. Yes. So, so at, so at this point, my preference would be to not solve the problem and simply say, this is something we do not address and someone else should address with some other uh, tag. Um, and... Uh, but I, I don't feel strongly one way or the other. I could write the, put the text in. I just don't know that I'll do a good job of explaining it clearly. So if, if someone were to put all these routing information, routing information and DNS and so on, um, into, uh, in, into their own format, um, do we have everything there so that they don't have to reinvent things that we already described here? Well, they would, um, 
of course, have a, uh, a a network configuration, which would be a prefix. They would then have a may have they could either describe an IID to put on the lower 64 bits, or they could describe the whole 128 bits they should configure. Um, they DNS DNS servers would be v4, or v6 addresses tagged as appropriately. A default route, you know, you could have a default route uh, listed a number of them in v4 or v6 uh, uh, versions. So you could have a bag of those or an array of them. Um, so I mean, there's a whole bunch of ways, but to me, it just sounds like it's a that's it's at this point, it's just a, a map with a bunch of keys. Um, and for all I know, it's already in a Yang a rank, Yang model somewhere. Um, in fact, I bet you the interface description is already in a Yang model uh, somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure network addresses and prefixes are also in Yang models. Um, but uh, I think we agree that these are really useful to have a tag for. Yeah. Um, so, so Michael, I have a thought experiment for you. If someone wanted to write a uh, little description of all of the address blocks and um, AS numbers that they have been assigned by the RIRs, would this have all of the elements they need to do that? Such as in an RPKI. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, yes. Okay. So, first of all, they would be describing V4 prefixes and V6 prefixes. Yep. Um, so, they don't need interface descriptions, so they wouldn't care about trailing bits. Um, if uh, they needed to indicate, I don't know, the address of their RPKI server, I don't think we actually have that because we don't delegate really, um, then that would be just an address there. Um, AS numbers, we don't have a tag for AS numbers, but if they were describing them, that's probably going to be uh, the key in a map rather than the value. So I would imagine a map that starts with an AS number and then in the value of the map is an array of prefixes, right? No, because, uh, well, that would be if you're actually st stating the uh, who can originate routes for that address block. But um, so you've, you've gone all the way to the row up as opposed to yeah, sure. the, to get the, yeah. But yes, uh, as long as you could tell the difference between the AS number or an AS number range, then I think you're okay. Yeah, so we don't have anything specific to deal with the AS number tagged or as number range okay but i think that that would fit into the structure of the thing you would say they're on the left or on the right or or whatever or yeah maybe you need a tag for as number ranges um that would be different um do people really get assigned sequential as numbers yeah they or, really they really fight for them <laughs> oh okay i mean i guess i can see how Iana would hand them out to RARs that way, yes. but um, but anyway, I I as I said, there's nothing there, there's nothing there to support or or not support AS numbers or AS number ranges. But on the pre on the the IP address side, I think it's complete. Perfect. Thank you. I, I mean, when I read the document, I was thinking about this in the back of my mind, and I didn't catch anything uh, on the address block side. So I, I'm not hearing. I'm going to write an email back and say I'm not hearing overwhelming support for putting this in now. If someone, if someone thought that they needed to do this in three years, uh, they could either define a new tag or they could define a new variation that uh, for this. And I. I I, I think this is not something that we should do, but I could be wrong. So I'll write the email about that. Sounds like it. Um, well, what... count, count me as uh, disagreeing. I didn't hear that, sorry. Well, I, I don't agree. Um, so the, the reason I don't agree is uh, immediately came to the mind of Ola because he, he knows that people need that. And uh, I also had uh, a little bit of a face palm here by 
uh, that essentially I didn't think of it when I looked at this for the uh, first time. And uh, yeah, so so waiting for the problem to come is is like assuming that 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 problem may never come, but uh, <laughs> it, it came to the mind of all uh, immediately, and uh, I must agree it, it's something that people want to do. Now so, the question so, is. Carson, I, I'm not. I'm not saying I will not doing it. I'm saying uh, that I'll write an email saying um, that you think it's a good idea. I'm on the fence on this. Okay, and uh, I'm going to ask the questions I just asked. Wouldn't there also yeah. be some additional network configuration? What is the use case for this? And is it bigger than just this part? And um, and basically, I'm going to say, you know, please give me a a uh, uh, an argument for why we should do it now, or why it's only as big as the problem yeah. that we have, right? Because I think the people that want to use it have a bigger have a bigger solution they want to fit it into. Yeah, so maybe calling it interface configuration was, was really confusing um, issues here because you are right, an interface configuration has lots more things uh, uh, in it, uh, but I still think that that the um combination of an address with a prefix that address is in um is a rather common uh, situation and wh why we are uh, allocating one plus one byte tags uh, we might as well cover that case as well okay uh, i will maybe throw the email at uh i don't know the lisp working group maybe they have some caring about that i i it occurs to me that they may have some thing they care about that way um and and then i'll ask the question is it is it something other than an interface configuration I mean, is it useful for something beyond an interface configuration okay Yeah, let me think about that again. I, I don't think interface configuration is really the word that that should guide I, us. I, I okay. I, I I take your point. I'm I'm I I think just I think we just need a term to to uh, to describe yeah. it right. Yeah, the, the long term is address uh, plus prefix the address is in. Uh, but I'm not sure that we have a short term for that. But that sounds like a discussion that can that that can go on well on the mailing list. And that we don't have to come to a conclusion right now. Yeah. So the, the interesting thing is that these tags are registered, so so people can start marching ahead using what what's in the document now. And uh, if we add this address plus prefix uh, thing, then it will make it slightly more useful for certain uh, application. But uh, yeah. Um, it, it's not stopping people from from using that now. One one thing that came to my mind on the on the context of these things are probably also in um, used in in some Yang models. Um, would it make sense to cross reference those from the from the description just to kind of to have all the links around saying that there are other contexts in which this is used and they are compatible or not compatible. Because they're described and they're described here and there. Especially when people come for this because they want to do really full interface configurations, they will come looking at this. See, yeah, here I have a former. Um, but if they read the full text, they might find that there is something that helps them solve their, their larger problem and in passing also solve this. Yeah, so Yang comes with Yang plus Sibo. Uh, so th there is a defined way to actually represent uh, this information in in Yang, 
um, th there's a little problem as a really a seaboard tag is where a Yang data uh, specification would be. So the, the existing specifications that uh, are not describing data uh, on the wire, but the data at rest, uh, you have to do a little bit of, of uh, uh, yeah, transfer to, to make, make use of them in a protocol. Uh, but I think that that's pretty obvious. And maybe at some point we actually should, as as was uh, uh, discussed when the ASDF working group was uh, started, uh, do some work on, on how Yang models and and the models that we have in tags and maybe even the models that we have in, in uh, CDDL, how these actually fit together. But on the more concrete side, is there a, are there other specific data um, data descriptions that we could point to here? Without without the the fully generic solution to how is the Cibo, how is a Yang how can a Yang item and a and a Cibo tag be mapped to each other? Kind of coming coming from the practical. Um, practical consideration that someone comes along who wants to implement their IF config on Seaboard, finds this, hops on it, and could have a useful forward useful reference to to the whole Yang topic. Yeah, for the, the the whole Yang topic, we actually have to do some some considerable uh, work. Um, for the the specific um, example of the Yang, uh, I forget what it's called. Uh, the model that defines things like uh, IP addresses. Um, I think it actually might be a good idea to write a little bit of uh, an informational document or even a wiki page uh, that binds this together with uh, CBOR information. Sounds good to me too. Okay then, um, any other comments on the um, network addresses part that we should at least take into consideration now, given that we are approaching the end of the session? Any other business in general? Well, with that, um, thanks, Michael, for taking notes. Um, I'll, send, I'll upload them later when the video is ready um, uh, as well. And yeah, thanks for the good productive discussion. And see you all in two weeks and read you on the mailing list. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.